I'm Cindy Simon Rosenthal, professor of political science and the director of the Carl Albert Congressional Research and Studies Center at the University of Oklahoma. I had the privilege of serving for 12 years on the Norman, Oklahoma City Council, including nine years as mayor. In 2007, I signed the U.S. Conference of Mayors Climate Protection Agreement. In the wake of President Trump's decision to pull out of the Paris Climate Accord, the most immediate response came from U.S. mayors, both Democrat and Republican. Dozens of U.S. mayors expressed their unwavering commitment to continue efforts to alleviate the impacts of climate change in their cities. Mayors around the world have the power to address climate impacts at the local level, often with immediate and impactful re results. These mayors represent an overwhelming majority of people around the globe. According to the 2010 census report, more than 80.7% of the U.S. population lives in urban areas, and this is up from the 79% in 2000. Population growth in urban areas is expected to continue to increase in the future. City mayors have emerged as leaders in climate adaptation innovation. They have a large impact because they confront day-to-day -day the economic and infrastructural challenges in their communities. In addition, cities often are, provide the first responders in extreme weather events, which are becoming more severe as the changing climate impacts city infrastructure, water supply, and human health. One of the reasons why city mayors have spearheaded climate adaptation efforts is because of the impacts of severe drought, extreme heat, and other extreme events are magnified in urban areas, and they fall unevenly on those who live in poverty. According to the Centers for Disease Control, from 1999 through 2009, extreme heat exposure caused more than 7,800 deaths in the United States. One in four deaths from weather-related events is caused by extreme heat. The 1995 heat wave, which struck Chicago, Illinois, resulted in more than 500 deaths in a four-day period, with victims being disproportionately elderly, black, poor, and living alone in single-room housing facilities with inadequate or non-existent air conditioning. The concrete and asphalt of cities increase temperatures by 10 degrees Fahrenheit or more and hold that heat longer compared to the surrounding rural areas. This phenomena is referred to as the urban heat island. Urban heat islands make a bad situation worse. In addition to the tall buildings reduce potentially cooling air flows, most urban environments lack trees or other vegetation to shade and cool the area. Climate change will also exacerbate existing infrastructure challenges in urban areas. An infrastructure challenge which has affected my community, among others, is the management of stormwater. Urban development increases runoff from rainfall and snowmelt by removing vegetation, compacting soils, leveling out the land surface, disrupting natural drainage basins, and increasing impervious surfaces. As a result, the volume and frequency of floods increase, and buildings constructed in flood-prone areas are exposed to even greater flooding hazards. When stormwater runoff increases, it can quickly overwhelm other municipal infrastructure, including sewer pipes, roads, and bridges. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the relative increase in peak discharge of a flood over the past several decades is greater for frequent small floods than it is for infrequent large floods. This means that the more frequent smaller floods have been increasing in their magnitude over time in urban areas. In addition, the Union of Concerned Scientists notes that as average temperatures have risen, more rain has fallen during the heaviest downpours. Very heavy precipitation events, defined as the heaviest 1%, now drop 67% more precipitation in the Northeast, 31% more in the Midwest, and 15% more in the Great Plains than was the case 50 years ago. This trend is projected to continue into the future with heavy rainfall events becoming more intense. Like the impacts of extreme heat and drought, flooding often has a disparate impact on persons living in poverty, as was demonstrated so dramatically with Hurricane Katrina. There are many approaches for reducing flood hazards in basins under development, but these approaches can be hard to implement because of competing land use needs. Areas identified as flood prone can be used for parks and playgrounds that can tolerate occasional flooding, but private property owners may seek a higher property value development instead. Some developers could even look at laying down pervious surfaces rather than impervious to help reduce runoff in parking lots. 
However, some stormwater mitigation techniques may be expensive or diminish the total developable land. These kinds of land use decisions place city officials on the front lines of dealing with the impacts of extreme weather and climate change on infrastructure investment. Cities are bearing the brunt of climate impacts, but they are responding with incredible innovation and collaboration. For example, many cities are receiving assistance from organizations like the Rockefeller Foundation's 100 Resilient Cities Initiative to address climate impacts. In the South Central region, Dallas, El Paso, New Orleans, St. Louis, and Tulsa are all participating in Rockefeller's unique collaboration of resources to help cities develop capacity to withstand chronic stresses like poverty and aging infrastructure and to prepare for acute shocks such as extreme weather events. Similarly, C40, a network of the world's 90 megacities committed to leadership on climate issues, promotes collaboration and information exchange. This commitment is no small matter, given that the participating cities represent one out of every 12 persons on the planet and one-fourth of the world's GDP. Many cities have rolled up their sleeves and committed themselves to addressing the impacts of changing climate in their own backyards. The solutions they are implementing address everything from water reuse strategies to energy conservation, to solid waste management, to food security. Their work has become more important than ever.